All right, so today's part of the lesson, we're going to do lines of best fit. We're going to create the lines of best fit, and we're going to figure out whether the line of best fit is actually a good model for the scatter plot. All right, so let's talk about whether the line is a good model first. So we're going to use something called residuals. So I'm just going to read you pieces of this. A residual is the difference of the y value of the data point and the corresponding y values. All right, the scatter plot of the residuals show how well the model fits a data set, evenly dispersed about the horizontal axis. If the scatter plot, if the residuals are evenly dispersed about the horizontal axis, it is a good fit. If the residuals show a pattern that suggests they show some type of pattern, then the data is not linear. So there's some models that are nonlinear. So we're just going to be working on linear models. And if the residuals are widely scattered, then the corresponding have no correlation. Some data here. We have uh, weeks and sales and millions. And there's an equation of a line that's spread at y equals negative 2x plus 20. And the question is whether this line is a good fit for the model. All right. So if we go about our I put this into our data, so we go, so just to remind you guys how to do it, we're going to go to stat, enter, stat, enter, list one, list two, plug this data in, and I'm just going to look at what the scatter plot looks like. So I'm going to hit second, y equals, I'm going to go on, turn my scatter plot on, so I have scatter plot one, I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to have my list one and list two on there. I have selected the scatter plot, and to look at this, I'm going to do zoom, 9, and then this will be the line. Actually, let me turn that off. So the equation, negative 2x plus 20 is the line I'm questioning here, and I actually went into y1, and I'm going to plot this line. So one more time. So I'm going to go zoom, 9. This just showed me my scatter plot. The line that we're questioning is, I'm going to plug into y equals, so I'm going to do y equals, and I'm going to plug this equation in, negative 2x plus 20 in y1, and I just want to see what the line looks like against the scatter plot. And if I graph this, there's the line of best fit that we want to know if, if this is the best line for the model. Okay, So we're going to use the residuals to see if this is true or not. Now based on what you see, would you think it's a good fit? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, So now when we do our residuals, all right, so this is the equation we have. That's the line we have there. And now we're going to look at the residuals. How do we get residuals? What are residuals? All right. So if we look at the equation negative 2x minus 20 and we substitute in the x values into the equation. So for the first one, if we have y equals negative 2 times 1 plus 20. You get negative 18. Negative 2 plus 20 is 18. So here's our first one. So this is the x values versus the scatter plot versus the model. So on the scatter plot, 1 was like, is 19. On the model, 1 is actually an 18. That's me. So if I'm looking at this model again, 1 has a value of 19, but on the model it actually has a value of 18. All right? So the scatter plots are not are the actual data. The line is the model that best fits the data. So the difference between, between the actual scatter plot and the equation is 1. That is your residual. I'm going to continue the process here. So if I want to find a residual for week two, so this is going to be y equals negative two times two plus 20. Negative two times two is negative four. Negative four plus 20 is equal to 16. So the model would have a y value of 16 versus the scatter plot having a y, uh, a y value of 15. What is the difference here? 15 minus 16 is equal to negative 1. All right. 
and I'm going to do, and I'm going to fill in the rest too. So if you fill in the rest, you're going to have 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4. And I'm just going to subtract across. 13 minus 14, negative 1. 11 minus 12, negative 1. 10 minus 10, 0. 8 minus 8, 0. 7 minus 6, and 5 minus 4. Once we have all the residuals, we're going to graph the residuals against the weekly sales. All right. So we're going to bring back our calculator. I'm going to go to y equals. I'm going to turn off the equation I put in there. So just put the cursor over the equal sign, hit enter, and I'll turn it off. And I'm going to change my stat plot. So I'm going to go second, y equals. So right now the stat plot has list 1 and list 2. But list 2 is the, the values from the scatter plot. We want to make our list 2 or another list of our residuals. So let's go and put our residuals in. So we have stat, enter. And in one of these lists, either list 1, list well, we're going to leave list 1 alone. I'm going to leave list 2 alone. So either in list 3 or list 4, let's, put, let's plug in our residuals. So I have mine in list 4. But you guys can put yours in list 3 if you like. So our residuals for the first one is 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Those are the residuals we just found. Make sure they correspond to the appropriate x value. Residuals in, let's go back to second, y equals, back to my stat plot, and hit enter. And make sure it's on. And then my y list, I'm going to use my residuals. Now I have mine under list 4, so I'm going to hit second, and the number 4. Because right above 4 it says L4. That's my list 4. Okay. So now I'm plotting L1 is my x values. My Y list is my residuals. Now let's, zoom, let's see what that looks like. I'm going to hit zoom, 9. And this is the stat plot that, that comes out, or the scatter plot that comes out. Here we got, after we put this in, this is what we have. And if we look at the residuals plotted against the horizontal axis, notice all your scatter plots. I have 1, 2, 3 above the y-axis, or y equals 0. I have 1, 2, 3 below. And I have 1, 2, on. Would you say these points or these plots are evenly dispersed? Yeah. Okay, so if they are evenly dispersed in the, way, in the manner that they are, then this equation is a good fit. All right, then the equation that was given is a good fit. Next is we're going to find out how to get our own equation. All right, so let's take a look at an example where we have to find our own equation using the TI-84 calculator. So we're actually going to find the lines of best fit. All right, so we're going to use the graphing calculators. Uh, lines of best fit, also known as regression lines or linear regression. And we're going to come across something called the correlation coefficient. This value tells whether the correlation is a positive or negative. Okay, so whether the line is going up or down, positive or negative, and how closely to the, the equation the model that models the data. So the stronger the correlation, the better the model. All right. So what gives it a strong positive correlation? So if you have an R value, and I'll show you guys how to get the R value on the calculator soon. So if you have an R value very close to 1 or 1, then it's a strong cor positive correlation. So if you have an R value, once we calculate it, 0.97, you could say that that model has a strong, cor strong positive correlation. If the R value is, let's say, R equals 0.75, so it still has a positive correlation, but it's not as strong as a correlation of R equals 0 0.97, and vice versa. So if you have R is equal to negative 0.97, then, this, then the model, the equation, has a strong negative correlation versus R equals negative 0 0.75. Still a negative correlation, but R equals negative 0.97 has a stronger correlation than negative 0.075. And let's see how that works. Now we're actually going to take an example and find the line of best fit. We have, we're going to, find, we're going to use the graphing calculator to find the line of best fit. We're going to identify and interpret the correlation coefficient. And we're going to interpret the slope and y-intercept of the line of best fit. All right, so this is everything we're going to get from here. So we have our table. We have duration, which is our x values. We have the time, which is our y values. 
And again, if I use my calculator and I have this preset, so I'm just going to go to second stat plot. I'm going to turn off, or I'm going to go back to my, so I'm going to go stat. I'm going to put those lists in. So I have those lists in uh, list five and list six. You could put them in whatever list you like. And I'm going to plot this. Right? So if I plot this, I'm going to do a second stat plot. I'm going to do list five and list six. So I'm going to change my L1 to list five. So I'm going to do second, second five. I'm going to change my L4 to list six. I'm going to make sure nothing is turned on, no equations are turned on. They're not. I'm going to do zoom nine, and I will get my scatter plot. So here's my scatter plot. Now I want to create a line of best fit in here. Okay, now we could estimate the line, which is not an easy task, but you could try to estimate and say, okay, where's where's that line between as many points as possible? So this could be an estimation of the line, but we're actually going to figure out how to get that line exactly. All right. So we're going to go back to our calculator, and this is how we get this line. So we're going to go to second quit. I'm going to go to a blank screen. I'm going to go back to stat. And not under edit, but I'm going to move the cursor to the right under calculate. So I'm going, to, I'm going to calculate the regression line. And I'm going to go down to number 4, which says lin reg ax plus b, which is like mx plus b. Right? a is my slope, b is my y-intercept. So lin reg, enter. It's going to ask me, what do you want the linear regression of? So I have my list 5 and list 6 in there. So put the appropriate list, the inappropriate list in there. So list x is my, L5 is my x, L6 is my y. I'm going to go to store regression. All right. So I'm going to store this regression line in one of my equations. Okay. So for so what do, what I want you guys to do here, hit bars, which is right next to the clear button. Move over to the right where it says y bars function and we're going to store this on the y y2 and what this really does is if you hit the y equals button when you go to y equals in the second slot this will put the regression line in there for you already okay so we're going to hit enter there and then we're going to hit calculate and this is what comes up you have y equals ax plus b a is 11.999 b is 35.10 and something's missing here, so we, we want a regression. We want the correlation coefficient, which didn't come up. And I'm going to show you how to put that, get that on your calculator. So it's one shot deal, right? We're going to hit the mode button, which is next to the second button. We're going to go scroll down to where it says stat diagnostics. We're going to move the cursor over the on button, and we're going to hit enter. And we're going to turn that on. Okay. I'm going to hit second quit. To get out of my screen and if you just hit enter one more time it'll bring back the last thing you put in and this time you'll have your r value there we, we put our data in we hit the linear regression we got an r value of 0.97 we have an a value of 11.99 a b value of 35 so from here we can say our slope is approximately equal to 12 our b value our y intercept is approximately equal to 35 and the correlation coefficient r is 0.97 what kind of correlation would you say that is? Yeah, this is, has a strong positive correlation. All right, so if I want to look at the graph now, I'll go back to graph. And now that is the linear regression model. Okay, this line goes through here. And from here, we could get other pieces of information from our data and go from there. All right, so let's look at some other information that we'll ask about this graph. So some questions that come up. So it says, approximate the duration before a time of 77 minutes. And part B, predict the time after an eruption lasting 5.0 minutes. So interpolation and extrapolation. So interpolation is in the 77 minutes. If you look at my data here, my table, where's 77 minutes? Well, here's 72, here's 84. I don't have a 77. So 77 minutes is going to say between 3.1 and 4.2 minutes. All right, so now I want to figure out well, what was the duration for 77. All right, so we're going to use our equation here. So we have 
the equation that we got from here was y equals, and again, I'm going to estimate the slope, so I'm not going to use 11.99, I'm just going to use y equals 12x plus, and the y-intercept I believe was 35.10, I'm just going to use 35, just to keep it easier. All right. So it's asking what happens, what was the time duration after 77 minutes? Well, this is my y value. So let's go back in and plug it in. So 77 equals 12x plus 35. Let's subtract 35 from both sides. We get 42 equals 12x. And then we get x is equal to 3.5. So if we look at the table, so we said before, in order to have a time duration of 77 minutes, it should be between 3.1 and 4.2, and we actually got it to be at 3.5. Alright, so now we can use the linear regression model to get data in here that's not that was not collected. Right? That's the interpolation in the in within the data set. Now what happens if we want to go outside of our box? Right, outside of the scatter plot. So the other one here says, well, so what happens if we go on the outside? Now we want five minutes. So now again, we can just use our equation again. So we have y equals 12 times 5 plus 35. 12 times 5 is 60 plus 35. And this will have a duration of 95 minutes. So the basic point of this is to get your equation, get your line, and be able to get other data that was not collected, future data, data that's in between your data, your your line, and so forth.